The Africa T20 Cup, featuring Zimbabwe, Kenya, Namibia, host South Africa and 12 feeder teams, will begin in September. This will be a World Cup-style competition, but with fewer World Cup places for associate nations up for grabs, is this the way to grow the game? They say the art of conversation is to talk about the right thing at the right time, and this is the right place. You're watching The Conversation. Welcome to The Conversation, I'm Ehi Longi and joining us on Skype today from Nairobi, Kenya is sports editor and cricket enthusiast Arjun Vidyati. Hello Arjun. Hi Ehi. Pleasure having you with us. Thank so, you. In a bid to promote the game and nurture young talent across the continent, Cricket South Africa has announced a new tournament to be known as the Africa T20 Cup. Cricket South Africa CEO Haroon Lorgat spoke to us last week after the announcement. For some while now, as Cricket South Africa, we've been uh, wanting to get ourselves involved into developing the game in Africa. We know the African Cricket Association has been doing a sterling job uh, for a number of years uh, as part of the ICC's development program. But I think being uh, known as the powerhouse uh, on the African continent uh, insofar as cricket is concerned, we felt uh, obligated to get involved. And this was a great opportunity because at the same time, we were looking to develop some good content for our domestic uh, affiliates uh, and associate members. Uh, so by marrying the two, uh, we felt this was a great opportunity to develop this T20 competition. We think the continent is ripe for supporting cricket and in particular 2020 cricket. Uh, we did have a domestic uh, tournament uh, for the affiliates in the 2020 format, which we are replacing with this more African uh, 2020 competition. Um, I think there's already some interest domestically. I've uh, been very encouraged since the announcement uh, to see how the continent has reacted to it. What we chose to do was to invite Zimbabwe as being the other full member on the continent. And then we asked the African Cricket Association for the top two uh, teams that were sitting on their ranking table. And that was Kenya and Namibia. Uh, I think we're starting with 16 teams, which means there are three teams from uh, Africa. Hopefully in due course we will be able to grow the number of teams participating uh, and that would allow us to include uh, or invite uh, more teams from Africa. And I also think it's a great opportunity for emerging cricketers, um, uh, particularly black players, uh, to stake a claim. You know the, uh, in, in March of 2016 there's the ICC World T20 that's being uh, hosted in India uh, and hopefully this is an early start uh, for young players to stake a claim uh, for higher honours. Okay, so Arjun, um, we'll try and break down what uh, Mr. Logat said there to different things. There's obviously some domestic matters for South Africa where their own affiliate members get to have possibly a high level of competition and a higher profile competition. But let's start by looking at the African cricket associates that have been invited and we have Kenya, we have Zimbabwe, we have Namibia. Um, first things first, is this the right way to expand the game? A T20 competition that's giving those players the opportunity, I guess, for a high level and regular competition against each other and probably with some decent level cricketers emerging from South Africa? Um, I definitely think so. Uh, he, um, I've been writing a column for the past few years and I kept on writing in my column that Cricket South Africa need to come out and start helping everyone around them. When I say everyone, I mean the likes of Kenya and uh, Namibia, maybe Uganda as well, because these are the up and coming countries. Um, so I think this is a great, great competition. Um, I thank Cricket South Africa for organizing it. And I hope that uh, Kenya, Namibia, especially because Zimbabwe are a test play nation anyway, I hope that these two associates can get all the experience uh, from this competition and grow, basically. Um, I mean, uh, we haven't obviously been able to track the story fully in Kenya, but within the cricketing circles in Kenya, who I'm sure you're in touch with a lot more regularly than I am, how is this being received? 
Uh, they're very, very happy. They know that finally, I mean, Kenya at the moment, we've been having some insecurity issues. So trying to get cricket teams to come here, trying to get anyone to come here, basically, uh, has been quite hard. So uh, we have been struggling a little bit, just playing with the likes of uh, Uganda, our neighbours. But uh, they're very happy that they do will be able to go on a tour. Uh, they will be able to play against these... Uh, Basically, they are feeder teams, aren't they, um, that uh, go on to play for the pro tier. So it, it'll be good for them, and they're excited. I mean, that's quite an interesting point. They are, I mean, the, the competition they'll be facing from within South Africa overwhelmingly will be feeder teams. And from what Mr. Logat has said uh, in the broader uh, interview that he actually did also with our sister show, uh, Sports News Africa, he was talking more about the transformation agenda than maybe giving... The, this competition also offering a platform for a lot of black players in South African cricket uh, to develop and have some exposure. I wanted to touch on that, though, because when you look at Kenya, when you look at Zimbabwe, these are two nations that uh, perhaps, you know, in earlier conversations we've had, we've talked about them having a higher level of competition, a much more intense competition to prepare them uh, for performing well on the world stage against established test nations, be that West Indies, which I know, who I know Kenya defeated in the past, or England or whoever, in whatever format of the game. Do you think there's going to be enough talent uh, within this this framework for them to have that sort of exposure? I think so. I mean, when you look at cricket in South Africa, they they really get behind the sport. You look at any sport in South Africa, they really put money behind it, and they get they, they you know they know that they've got a lot of talent there. Uh, they've got the facilities where people can go and train uh, twenty four seven if they want to. Um, if it's raining, they've got indoor nets. Whereas in Kenya, we don't have any of that. So I'm sure there's a lot of talent in South Africa. I'm sure that even for Mr. Lorgat, um, finding these black players, as he says, I'm sure he will find some for sure. Do you think it's going to be that smooth a transformation for them? I mean, the, the whole transformation agenda has been around South African sport in a, for a while. Uh, and as I said, without touching on that, my worry um, is that we are actually creating a second tier competition. Maybe there might be... There might be a concentration, it, it won't probably solve the questions. But then you seem to also think that for Kenya, this is probably better than the alternative. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, for uh, South Africa, finding black players is not the issue. I think if, if you are capable of playing at such a level, automatically you should be chosen. I don't think it should be uh, a matter of, of race or skin color or anything like that. Um, cultures are different. I'm sure in Kenya you do have your Indian players who come in a... Kenyans of Indian origin who, who play, but after a while they move into business and all of that. So it's, it's tr quite, quite hard to keep them all together. But in South Africa, there's so many sports that they do play, and you do have some really good black players as well. I remember um, Kai Antini was a really good fastballer. He was a, a cattle herder. And I'm sure there are many out there who would use him as, as an example uh, to try and reach the pro tiers. That's uh, a good thing about South Africa is that they, they have had in the past, they have had these black uh, cricket legends, basically. OK, well, that's a very fair point. And actually, when we come back after the break, we're going to look at another country in Africa, perhaps trying to develop their cricket in their own very special way. See you after the break. OK, welcome back to the conversation. Uh, I'm discussing, if, if you didn't know, I'm discussing with Arjun Vidyati, who's a cricket enthusiast and sports journalist who's joining us from Nairobi, Kenya. Arjun, I just want to carry on a, convers uh, a conversation point we're having before the break, and that's actually about everything around the tournament from a point of view of quality. So Kenya, for instance, as, as you've uh, earmarked before, struggling with both corporate involvement, sponsorship, identifying players, development of the game. This is only about T20. Um, if we use rugby as an example, rugby is now an Olympic sport, but it's an Olympic sport because of the sevens, uh, and through sevens, hopefully 15s will grow. Um, do you see T20 as being the answer in terms of all the formats available? And do you see T20 as perhaps contributing to great test-playing nations emerging within Africa? Um, I, I don't see it that way. I think you can't compare test, test cricket and T20 cricket. I think T20 should be used to get the excitement and to get a following um, when you watch the IPL or even the T20 World Cup, it's just a lot of fun to see the big hits and uh, to, to see the excitement around it. Um, uh, yeah, so in, in Kenya, I think it would really, really help our Kenyan cricketers. At the end of the day, the ICC have said that they want, to go, they want the associates to concentrate more on T20 cricket. So I guess competitions like this will help teach them 
that uh, there are different styles of playing for every type of cricket, be it one day test or T20. Okay, I mean, talking about that, uh, we'll probably look to the... Uh, I, in fact, I'm going to save conversation on the World Cup for, for shortly. But actually, I want to talk about that in terms of... We had Essen Mani, and I had a conversation with him last week. And it seems to be that uh, it might be a generational issue, it might be just a policy issue, but the global game is, seems to be more worried about tests matches and maybe protecting the, the status and the, and the importance of test series. But that's something that is a world away, as you've rightly identified from T20. Is, is it something that you would advise the ICC at this point to almost forget about? The test game is not going to grow in emerging nations and they should focus on one day, perhaps, but definitely T20? Well, at, at the end of the day, uh, as a cricket lover, if you are a, a lover of the cricket game, of course, you'd want to watch uh, Test Cricket because that's where it all started, uh, the four days, the five days game. But as, as a generation grows, like, like you said, the young generation, they're just interested in, in a lot of fun. If you go and watch a T20 game, the atmosphere that you'll get is completely different from what you'll get at a Test game. Um, so, like I said in the past, if, if to get a following to the game of cricket, especially to countries that don't really play it and don't have such a big following, like Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and all of that. I think T20 is the way to go. Okay. I see, no, no, Karen, sorry, Karen. I, I was just saying that the ICC, I think they're just worried to, to lose uh, to, to lose face over test cricket. But as, as generations change and as, as time evolves, uh, all of this changes. I mean, you look at where football started and where it is now, the rules have changed. So you just have to to change with the times. I mean, we don't want to. I mean, obviously, FIFA do take a lot of heat for a lot of other stuff. But you are very correct to identify the fact that FIFA have been very focused on growing the game. However, though you've had rule changes and and and, and such, the core of the game has always been protected. It's still an eleven aside game. They haven't grown it using futsal or using five aside or indoor. I mean, we've just had the African Beach Soccer Championship. So they're variations of the game, but the game is the game. The challenge for cricket seems to me that firstly, it's quite an expensive game. And can you tell us, I mean, for instance, taking Kenya as a country, what, is the, what are the socioeconomic backgrounds of, of the core uh, Kenyans who are involved in the game of cricket? Well, it started off with a lot of uh, Asians of Indian, uh, Kenyans of uh, Indian heritage who would pick up the game. And uh, because at the end of the day, like, like you rightly said, it is expensive. You need to have pads and you need to have a ground. And a cricket bat is not very uh, cheap. But as time went on, the youngsters, your Steve Tecolos and your Morris Odumbes, who would hang around the cricket field, would pick up maize cobs and uh, sticks, and they would start playing cricket that way. So that's how everything changed, and that's how we got now the the Africans into into playing cricket. Right now, uh, I think there's a, a mixture. The youngsters are mostly uh, Asians, but from the core national team, it, it's straight down the line. OK, but is there, I mean, and this is a genuine question. Is there actually a need then uh, for Kenyan cricket to grow if it's not being, is there a, de not need, sorry, is there a demand for the growth of Kenyan cricket? So are there lots of players, forget finding talented players, are there lots of players, lots of fans who are looking for this sort of competition? Is there something to harness, to, to, is there an audience to build this competition around? Not at the moment, eh? I think uh, things have changed over the past what, 15 years? I mean, in, in 1996 when we beat West Indies and in 2003 when we beat Sri Lanka, because there was such a buzz around the game of cricket, uh, you know, everyone everyone wanted to go and buy a Kenya cricket shirt or they wanted to go and, and play cricket. Right now, because Kenya cricket has gone down uh, a lot, there's not that much interest. But hopefully having these T20 games and marketing it well, I think that's also something that needs to be done. Market the game well, you get interest into the game. And then, of course, you'll have your youngsters who want to play. And that's when you start your grassroots and you, you try and find those those, uh, you know, hidden gems. OK, I mean, marketing is obviously a very key point. And we look at, again, isolating Kenya, um, but generally across East African sport, we've seen that a lot of sponsors are moving away uh, from, especially uh, in Kenya, moving away from football and moving away uh, from some athletics, uh, some unfortunate headlines recently, but it seems there's a longer a longer term issue there. Um, what is, is there, are there lessons to learn from a, from a sponsorship and corporate engagement level uh, that you think that uh, Cricket South Africa and indeed the ICC could help Kenya with at this point? Um, I think at the moment, the reason why we're losing all these sponsors has got nothing to do with the game itself. I think it's got to do with uh, the boards that are in control of the games. There's been a lot of uh, um, 
bribery and corruption that has been going on in all these boards. And as a corporate, you don't want to be involved with it. So I think what needs to change first is that the government needs to get involved and they need to sort out the boards. And after that, then maybe the, the corporates will come on board and have proper structures in place. Uh, I think that would help us. But at the moment, Kenyan sports, be it athletics with the doping, be it football with the uh, accusations of of graft, uh, it, it's in a big mess. OK, well, let's try and keep this upbeat then. Let's not get too downhearted. We're going to talk a bit more about the World Cup, uh, the One Day World Cup and how that will help. But just quickly, we've only got 20 seconds before the break. I just want to know, your favourite player from the last World Cup, who was it and why? Uh, last World Cup, I'd have to say it was from the New Zealand team, Brendan McCullum. He did fantastically. He was a great captain on the pitch, and I really wanted them to win. Um, I followed New Zealand because of Mike Hessen, who was the ex-Kenyan uh, coach. But unfortunately, that's cricket, I guess. That's sports. Well, it was a great final. And when we come back after the break, we'll see how another African nation is trying to use the World Cup to grow the game in their territory. See you after the break. Welcome back to the conversation. Now, talking of World Cups, the Nigeria Cricket Federation is embarking on the construction of two international standard cricket pitches at the Abuja National Stadium. Work has already begun on the pitches, which are expected to be completed in three months, ahead of the National Cricket Club League in September. In an ambitious plan to raise the country's cricketing profile with a single event, Nigeria's National Sports Commission flagged off construction of two international standard cricket pitches on Saturday. The pitches, which the National Cricket Federation, NCF, says will be completed within three months, are being built to boost Nigeria's chances in a bid to host a cricket World Cup in the near future. This is the foundation for development of any sports infrastructure internationally acclaimed standard infrastructure, and that's what we have done today. This infrastructure will trigger sports in Nigeria, will trigger employment of youths, and trigger commercialization of these sports as well in Nigeria. You cannot do any of this if you don't have grounds. Nigeria, which is well known for its obsession with football, is not known for its cricket, but Onyama believes that the country is ripe for the sport. The prospect of such grounds, according to Onyama, has attracted much international attention from some of the world's leading cricketing nation seeking partnerships with Nigeria. We have gotten letters from, some, from a lot of countries, India, Australia, you know, even England, of their interest to partner with us in playing cricket in Nigeria, which means that after this game is built, after this ground is completed, you are going to be seeing a whole lot of invitational cricket tournaments from a host of these countries that you people see on TV coming to play here. To, and, and, that will, and that will increase tourism, sports tourism, thereby also create money for the Nigerian economy. If Nigeria's bid to host a Cricket World Cup is successful, it would make it the fourth African nation to do so. The tournament was co-hosted in 2003 by South Africa, Zimbabwe and Kenya. Okay, that was Emeka and Yama there of the Nigeria Cricket Federation showing an example of how uh, countries themselves can, I suppose, address the issue and, 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 and create the right framework for the right sort of uh, tours and whatever to happen. But Arjun, talking about tours, one thing we have talked about, and it's not just within Africa, you look at Pakistan who are now playing uh, most of their cricket outside the UAE. Because there's societal issues, uh, especially look at Kenya, um, you look at Zim uh, having to travel to play Pakistan next month in the UAE, it's more the case that actually getting the right level of competition and getting the heroes and the stars of the game to come into your country to play, putting aside all the other issues, that seems to be something that no one is really able to address as far as cricket within Africa at the moment. Um, no, I completely agree with you. I mean, it, it's, it's quite hard. For Kenya, for example, if you want to really get bums on the seats in the cricket stadiums, um, you have to bring in the likes of the Indian players. You bring in Sachin Tendulkar, you'll see a full ground. You bring in the Pakistani players, you'll see a full ground. But getting them over here, I think the way things are going, Ahi, it's all become um, about money as well. 
Uh, Kenya would never be, or Cricket Kenya, with what they're given from the ICC, they don't really have uh, many sponsors here in Kenya. They would never uh, be able to afford such things. So if Nigeria are, are getting there, then good on them, and good on them, and uh, I wish them good luck. Now, I mean, even if Nigeria was to invest all this uh, time and effort in developing a, and, and delivering a stadium in three months, which would be a, a one, one hell of a feat. Um, but even if they were to do that, and even if they were to take a, a, remove the issue of uh, whether or not they get enough tours, the plans of the ICC themselves, especially with regards to the World Cup, surely they're the biggest hamper for the growth of the game because they're now looking to turn the World Cup, World Cup sorry, into a closed shop. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Um, well, the ICC just want to keep their eight original members in the World Cup and then bring in two associates, um, which are more likely would be um, Ireland and maybe the Netherlands or Scotland or any of those those upcoming countries. And they want to basically leave everyone else out. Um, but I have big issues with that. You can't call it a World Cup if the countries around the world are not taking part in it. They're not only taking part... Um, Fine, they do have the associate qualifications for the World Cup, but even with the associate countries, you only have around 12 or 14 all around the world. If you look at the Football World Cup, every single region around the world has qualifiers, then they play against another region. So so you, you deserve to be there. You shouldn't just be walking in knowing every four years that you're going to be you know, qualifying for a World Cup. So the ICC, I think, in this, in this, uh, have lost a plot. Um, well, I let's, don't let's, think... Let's row back a second, because, I, I mean, obviously, the thing is, any time you speak to anybody about the plans of the ICC to do that, it, everybody reacts the same way you've just done, which is, it doesn't make sense. It but doesn't. There, there is, there, I mean, they've obviously got some logic behind them. Where, where, I mean, is, have, you, have you had a look at why? I mean, what is their argument for doing it this way? Look, I, I, it's not about the argument. At the end of the day, it's all about money. The ICC is like a business. They know that uh, with India, they've got a billion cricket followers. So India have to be one of the top teams. Then, of course, wherever around the world you have your big teams, New Zealand, Australia, there are a lot of cricket followers there. So they know that if they stick with these few teams, they will get X amount whenever the World Cup comes around. But they forget that if they stick that way and they don't send enough money down to the youngsters, you're just going to be stagnant at the end of the day. You might as well just just every year have a cup between all these teams and then the winner is a winner. The World Cup is losing its, its charm uh, during the World Cup. I mean, in India and Sri Lanka, we saw Ireland beating England and the associates were pu pulling off uh, surprises. That was, uh, I mean, that was what I was going to say to you, because surely, some, I mean, the World Cup, yes, it is, it is a bit of a long uh, World Cup in terms, you know, and that probably could be addressed in terms of maybe playing, it is only 50 overs, maybe part of the test for the top team should be playing more matches throughout the week. But one cannot get away from the fact that some of the most exciting and uplifting matches at the World Cup involved associate nations either you know, as you say, beating England, uh, which, you know, w was has been par for the course for at least one associate nation at every World Cup. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I mean, as a product, that was what made the product because towards the end, apart from everyone loving New Zealand and Brendan McCullum, it was the usual suspects at the usual stages, surely. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, when, when you have a World Cup and you have these associate nations, they want to go out onto the big stage and prove that they might be called minnows, and I really hate that term, minnows. They might be the minnows, but they've still got the talent and they can still perform at the end of the day. And when you're locking out these people who, for four years, they just plan, uh, hoping that they make that big stage and prove to the world that, that we, we've got talent and we can do it, when you lock them out of a competition like this, that's, that's totally unfair and it's, it's just wrong. OK, Arjun, we've got very little time left and I've already found, well, you've already told me who your favourite player at the World Cup was. But just as quickly as you can, sum up your hope uh, with the uh, New Cricket South Africa initiative and all the ICC could and should do for uh, cricket in Africa. Sum up your hope and your, your vision for the future of cricket in Africa. Well, uh, my hope is that this first step by Cricket South Africa bringing this competition will really blossom and uh, we'll get more teams going down to South Africa all the time. They've got the money from the ICC. They've got money from the sponsors. And what they can do, being the big brother 
of the entire continent is try and bring the little boys in and, and give them some competition. And hopefully the ICC don't forget about the minnows and go looking into places like China because okay. there's a Arjun, billion I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to jump in there because we are out of time. But yes, I think you're saying exactly what every cricket fan in Africa would be hoping. So actually, thank you for joining us today. I hope that uh, it hasn't been too onerous. I know there's a storm rolling in, so we'll let you get <laughs> safe and wrapped up very soon. Um, Cheers, but to everybody Jay. else watching, uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Post your own opinions and queries. Use the hashtag SNA Conversation and be part of Africa's sporting conversation.